So first you're gonna need a black t-shirt or any color you want. Some tool fabric, um, your pins, your measuring tape, a seam ripper, and your sewing machine, of course. Okay, so first we're gonna take the sleeve apart with the seam ripper. However you take apart your seam, you can just go ahead and do it that way, but you know, the seam ripper is the easiest way to do it. So yeah, but while recording this, um, it took me a while because of my life and children, so I just wanted to show you how it really is. Ma'am. Huh? What are you doing? I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, kids, they just don't care what you're doing. They, it's about them. But anyway, so yeah, this is me continuing to finish um, ripping the seam out. So after I'm done taking the seam out, I like to pick apart or pick out those little threads that are in there just so they won't get in the way while you're sewing. And once you have the sleeve off of the bodice or like the body part of the t-shirt you're going to take apart that seam underneath the underarm of the sleeve once you're done your sleeve should look like this or longer depending on how your t-shirt is and you're going to use that as a pattern for this longer sleeve that we're going to make and look at how like i've never used tool before like it's easy but you know you gotta like move it around get it right make sure everything is flat and straight so yeah that's just me showing you how like a little tedious it can be but it's not that bad so you're gonna go ahead and take that sleeve like i said use it as a pattern and so I'm just placing it right on top of the fabric. Um, so at this point, I didn't measure, um, or I didn't show you that I measured, but you're gonna measure like how long you want the sleeve. So from the underarm to wherever you want the sleeve to end, plus like a half an inch for seam allowance, you can go ahead and measure that along the edge of the fabric. <laughs> and there's Cody again. I didn't feel like it was necessary to mark it. Mind you, it's really very hard to mark something that's sheer, but um, I just went ahead and cut it while the pattern is still on there. Then I'm just folding it in half and then it's gonna cut down the side. Cause listen, we're trying to make this as easy as possible. So this is a DIY, not to do too much. So let's make it easy. So at the bottom, I just kind of eyeballed like how long I wanted mine to be. But if you know specifically, like if you have a specific measurement, then you can go ahead and mark that prior to you cutting. So this is how they're going to look. You need to make sure you cut two of the sleeves. I didn't film this part, but I cut 54 by 10 inch pieces and then folded them in half and then cut them, um, I guess, to five inch pieces. So you can cut them five inches, but I felt like it was easier to just cut them in 10 and then fold it and cut it in half. And that's gonna be the bottom half of the sleeve. And I cut four 10 inch pieces. So it's gonna end up being eight.
Another reality moment. I had to ask him for that kiss, but he brought me this fruit roll up, so you know, levels out. So now that you're done cutting all those pieces, we're now gonna go back to the sleeve, pin it, and then take it to the machine and sew it. Don't forget to back stitch. And also, that was literally my first time sewing tool, and you see that line was not straight, but I figured it out later, so you know. Be patient with me. So now we're gonna take the sleeves that we already have sewn and turn them inside out. And then we're going to take our t-shirt and we're going to turn that inside out. And then we're going to tuck our sleeve inside the shirt. And then make sure you match the seams together. And then you're going to pin all around the armhole. Don't y'all like this shirt? I'm not into anime, but I do, or I did love Sailor Moon. Just wanna make that known as we continue to pin this t-shirt. I should definitely try to be more enthusiastic, but you're gonna take this to the machine and sew along the armhole. So moving on, I'm taking four of the eight strips and laying them on top of each other. Um, you can do this multiple ways. Like in order to add the frilliness at the end of the sleeve. Um, so the flattest way that I've learned is to do pleats, but you can also like just um, ruche it on the machine, but either way is up to you. 
So I'm quickly going to show you two different ways that you can do the bottom part of the sleeve. You see how I'm ruching that? You can do that at the machine and then just sew. Or you can do pleats. You can take your pins and then do like a half an inch um, fold and then pin it all across the top. Or you can just do that as you sew. Either way, however skilled you are. You can just choose whichever way works best for you. So I don't know what happened, but the video of me actually sewing all the fabric sh strips together just like, I don't know, disappeared or something, but that is how it's gonna look afterwards. So this is kind of hard to explain, but we're gonna kind of roll the, am I tweaking? I literally thought I just saw a bug. <laughs> so you're gonna roll the sleeve, like the top of the sleeve on top of the bottom part of the sleeve and, and then pin it, if that makes sense. All in all, you're gonna sew the bottom part of the sleeve onto the top part of the sleeve because we're gonna do a top stitch. that bottom part because you're about to sew a sleeve and you want to you know, put the sleeve on the machine so I placed my t-shirt on the machine from the neck hole so I can get um, you know a flat lay of how I want the shirt <music> some pictures of the end result. I made this for somebody and so here it is. 